Hello all, this is Halloween, and if you love haunted history, mystery, marvels as much as I do, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be taking you somewhere new every week. Today we are headed to an unincorporated area of Miami-Dade, Florida to visit the Coral Castle. We physically went there a couple weeks ago and it was a lot smaller than I expected it to be. <laughs> but one of the things that I didn't really understand is when we first got there, I had the GoPro. I was ready to go in there and take some footage of the castle so that I could come back and make a video and show you guys. But having a GoPro evidently wasn't allowed and I didn't know that. So as I'm walking up, I have my GoPro and I'm kind of filming a little bit. And there was a guy sitting down in the little shelter area and he was like, they're not gonna let you have that in there. And I was like, okay. I said, well, I have a phone. It does the same thing. He's like, they won't let you have that. You can't film in there. And I was like, okay. But there was no explanation why. Like he didn't tell me why I couldn't have it. He's just like, nope, they're not gonna let you have that in there. And then as I was talking to the other lady, uh, she was like, yeah, you can't have that in here. I was like, it's in my purse. She's like, well, it can't be visible. I was just like, why isn't anybody telling me why I can't have this in here? You know, it was driving me nuts. Like, okay, I can't have it in there, but nobody's telling me why. Evidently, they only do guided tours inside the castle. You cannot be just going in there on your own, doing your own footage or filming your own stuff or anything like that. It has to be the guided tour. You cannot be in the castle without a guide. Nobody said that. This I can understand because it is a guided tour and I'm a tour guide myself. I don't want people with a GoPro filming my entire tour because then what? Then they don't come, right? But why couldn't you just say that? After going in and seeing what the whole experience was, I then understood. But why is it such a big secret? So I was a little bit heated before we went in there, but the lady that I talked to prior to going in, even though she really didn't give me an explanation either, she kind of like buffered the edges, you know, and, and made me feel a little bit better. Because then I was starting to understand that it was a guided tour, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm a tour guide, and same here, you know? But I don't know why that was such a big deal. That's the only thing that bothered me about the whole experience. Because I do believe that I've seen videos about this, Coral Castle, I haven't seen any recently, but some that I've looked up of footage taken back even in the 70s and 80s, you know, people were allowed to go in and discover on their own. But I can also understand why they're not, because people probably started doing stupid stuff. There's a lot in there that you can climb on and get injured on. That's a high liability. Tons and tons of coral, and it's hard. You know, it's harder than cement. So if anybody falls as they're climbing up on this structure, probably put them out of business. It's a big deal. As I'm understanding why everything is the way it is, I'm starting to feel a little better. We had a great tour guide. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about the Coral Castle. The story goes, Edward Leeds Skullman began construction of this beautiful limestone anomaly after an engagement to the love of his life, Agnes Scuffs was broken off just the day before they were to marry. She was only 16 years old at the time and he had referred to her affectionately as his sweet 16. It is said that Agnes' father did not approve. Edward was poor and did not have an adequate education. So Agnes' father didn't think that this was the man for her to marry because for those reasons, he wouldn't be able to support her. So really tore up and brokenhearted about this because he was supposed to move with his new bride to America, Edward decided to relocate to North America all by himself and create a monument dedicated to his lost love. I think he also was setting out to prove to her father that he actually was a worthy man. He was worthy of her love. In the beginning, what he originally called Rock Gate Park was located in Florida City. However, Florida City started to populate around where he had started to build and he didn't like that. He wanted this to be a very private build. You know, he was doing it all on his own and he didn't want anybody to see what he was doing. So he purchased 
10 acres of land in the homestead area, which today is considered an unincorporated part of Miami-Dade, Florida. So he relocated the first of his builds to the new location and then got to work once again. The overall physics and intricacies of this structure, as well as the mathematic and scientific accuracies of such a creation seems to everyone to be physically impossible. For one man to conceptualize and then execute all by himself, he only stood at just over five feet tall and a hundred pounds. He only built at night and made sure that nobody saw him in action. It took Edward 28 years to complete the structure. To build it required over 1,100 tons of stony coral, in other words, oolitic limestone. And just how did he do this? Many believe he used black magic. Edward claimed that he had mastered the structural secrets of the Egyptian pyramids and that he had implemented those methods when constructing the castle. His family were Latvian stonemasons and throughout the structure there are multiple Masonic symbols, leading to another theory that perhaps occultist Masonic practices were at play here. There have been two different instances, people that claim to be witnesses as to what was going on. One was two teenagers that had been in the area that claimed to witness large pieces of this limestone seemingly levitating and floating in midair. Another account was from a young woman who claimed to have heard like chanting over the stones. No one will ever truly know the secret and the mystery behind the creation of Coral Castle. Edward Leeds Scotland took it to his grave and there it will be for eternity. We've arrived at Coral Castle here in Miami-Dade. It's an unincorporated part of Miami-Dade, Florida between Leisure City and Homestead. Uh, right off the bat, it looks smaller than I anticipated. Let's go in and check it out.
We're here at Casitas Tejas in downtown Homestead, not too far from Coral Castle. It was established in 1987 and being so close to Miami, I'm almost certain they've probably got the goods. Let's go in and get a bite to eat. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's episode. This is a short one. I realize that. <laughs> Sometimes short ones are good though. It really is an interesting place to go and see it. If you want to see it, just know that you cannot film in there and they will not tell you why. But now that you've watched this episode, you know why and it does make sense. And it also makes sense that they don't let anybody in there without a guide. It's potentially dangerous for young kids and even teenagers, they'll get up there and climb and do goofy stuff. And that's probably why they don't let you in anymore without a guide, which I can totally understand. Those of you who are interested to go in uh, without a guide and just explore, they do offer that once a year on Halloween. It is said to be haunted there, or at least strange things have occurred in the castle and they let people in much like myself and you know people that do the same kind of things as I do people that are responsible you know and want to go in there and film they allow that on Halloween so you can book that in advance and go in there and explore without a guide and take your own footage and all of that but it is I believe only one time of year or at least the month of October I'm not sure which but you can definitely go to their website and see exactly when that's going to be if that sounds like something that's interesting to you. Another thing that was really cool that we found out while we were there was Billy Idol. His Sweet 16 video was actually filmed there. So if you want to check out Billy Idol Sweet 16, look it up on YouTube. It was filmed there at the Coral Castle. So they even showed us a place just above the sundial where he was sitting at one point in the video. So pretty cool if you want to look at that. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel out. And to all of you who already have subscribed, thank you so much. Every time I get a new subscriber, I like jump for joy. <laughs> it's just like one subscriber every four or five days, so, you know. But I'm, I'm super excited that y'all are enjoying the content and I will continue to create content for you as long as you're liking it. That does it for today's episode. I'll see you next time.